We are joined by our former coach, a legend of the game, the GOAT, when it comes to recruiting. Who else could we be talking about? But coach Frank Wilson. Coach Frank, what's up, man? What's going on? Long time no see, long time no talk. It is great to be back with you. What's going on, bro? Nothing much, man. You look absolutely great, T-Bob. How much you weighing right now? Bro, 255. We just figured it out this week. Back to my old high school, like, junior year weight, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look great, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Both of you guys for having me on. Uh, it's an honor to be with you this morning. Uh, well, look, Coach, uh, not to just play the compliment game, but you look fantastic as well. Um, aging like a fine wine. Uh, just getting better and better. Uh, with age and uh, well I would say that the results on the recruiting trail and everything speak to that as well let's start in a generality right because I know you can't talk about guys who are committed or signed or, or until they sign or whatever right but a couple of months ago there was a panic quickly developing oh no what's going on else you lose their way and then this yes heater a couple of weeks next thing you know back in the top 10 all is well um what has it been like I mean, it's a familiar place for you but there are a lot of unfamiliar places. It's a hard reset in a lot of ways. What has it been like kind of building this thing back up from the ground floor? And really, you're one of like the day one hires. You've been here since the ground floor. What's the past few months been like? A um, hundred miles and running, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, first was was the class of 22. Uh, we, we had some guys in position um, in state that we were able to secure um, and it was the first thing that Coach Kelly did, and, and Brian Polian and, and our staff went out and, and, and started to to solidify the class of 22, and then went into uh, this new thing, T. Bob, the the portal, yep. and really uh, reached back and, and got some of our homegrown talent. Uh, I believe somewhere seven or eight out of the 14, 15 guys we got out of the portal were Louisiana natives, um, guys uh, like that. That um, that would in, in in the past probably would have been groomed here as freshmen and sophomores and juniors. We just took a, another route and went and got them out of the portal as graduates or guys with two years of eligibility. And lo and behold, now now you're looking at uh, you know 20 or 19, 20 of your 25 signees from the great state of Louisiana. So we got it right in in 22, but it, it took some time, and it went in a roundabout way and concluded. Uh, you know, with, with Kobe Richardson, a transfer from McNeese by way of Mac Main High School out of New Orleans. Um, and then we got going uh, with this class and uh, and like our reach, like that we can go near and far uh, to do uh, do what we need to. And I think we're trending in the right way. Uh, and we're not finished yet. We're, we're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up uh, to, uh, to move forward with the class of 23. <laughs> It never ends. Yeah, hey, Coach, I want to I want to talk about the transfer portal and the process of how you find a player because it was fascinating to me. I was talking with BK at SEC Media Days. He's like, look, we kind of have like a pro approach because certainly in the pros, you've got college scouts, you've got pro scouts. He said, well, it's kind of the same thing for us. We have high school scouts and we kind of have college scouts now, and that's the way we're going to break down players. And so, like, what's that process? Like, if you're in the portal, like, are, is – is it a deal where you look at running backs only? Is it a deal where everybody kind of just looks at players and maybe kind of gives a couple of thoughts to BK whenever the kind of that final decision has to be made? Yeah, so uh, a lot of times with the with the portal port, uh, Will Redman and those guys in personnel head that up, and we're looking at guys from uh, from a roster management standpoint and the available bodies and, and, and body of work, and we begin doing – background check of uh, of who that person is and their abilities and how do they fit us mm. uh, where the other side is is Gerard Belton and his staff that mostly concentrate on the high school guys and identifying that and so um, you know the recruiting department is so much bigger yeah. than it was uh, way back when you know you when we were we playing <laughs> yeah. you know and so you uh, we're, we're able to canvas uh, both collegiately and high school uh, from a national perspective and, and the need of, of our football team. And so we have those two departments exactly like Coach Kelly described to you, one that is specific to high school, the other with portal and college transfers. So uh, that's recruiting. We can circle back around there if we want to, but it is a report day for camp, man. Gets your juice going yeah. a little bit, got a little goosebumps going. 
And we were yeah. just talking about it. It's pretty fascinating, right? Because new faces everywhere. Every single position seemingly up for grabs. Like there's a couple that are settled, but this is going to be one of the more intense playing time kind of battle heavy camps that I've ever seen. And your group specifically has a yeah. lot of that going on. I'll ask you the same thing I've asked Denbrock and Sloan when it comes to quarterbacks, when it comes to running backs. Um, although that's a position where every, you know multiple guys can see time. What is it going to take? What do you need to see out of the person that is going to try to uh, take those first reps for themselves? So uh, our, our welcome back uh, was last night, right? So we we went oh, over nice. the all-star lanes, right? And, and, and got a little bowling in. And what? you should have seen the blood boiling, right? And, and talk about kept, uh, competitive nature, right? So yes, I should have had you there with us. It all went down to the last frame. So we had six guys on each team, including myself and Coach Trent Miles. And, you know, we, you know, everybody bowled over 100. Okay, there you go. Nice. Okay, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Nick Demas went 150, 160. Damn. Uh, and, and he went head to head uh, with, with another one of the guys. But we're going back and forth, and Noah Kane and John Emery going back and forth. And, you know, it, it was good to see. Yeah, that's our room. That's that's the competitive <laughs> nature we're talking about. And we're bowling. Yeah. It's not practice, it's bowling. Yeah. Uh, but it, it lends to let you know what type of men we have in that room and the expectation of what's going to start happening on tomorrow uh, and all that we do. But I'm very, very pleased with our room, expecting um, expecting a lot of good things out of, a, uh, out of our room. Uh, I, I think, you know, it'll organically unfold itself. Guys will show what they do best. We will adjust accordingly mm -hmm. to the strengths of our team and uh, – and we'll see if we get a bell cow that emerges uh, out of out of our room. But uh, I like our room. I like our talent. I like our competitive nature of those young, young men. Now, Coach, do you prefer to have maybe a bell cow? Do you you know prefer to have maybe a running back by committee? Because we were talking yesterday. LSU's had a lot of success. Oh three, oh seven, eleven. They yeah. had running backs by committee. Those are yeah. you know teams. Two of those teams won a national championship. Another played in a national championship. Now I know in nineteen, yeah. Clyde played like ninety three percent of the snaps. That's a little bit of an outliner. Do you prefer one way or the other, or do you see like value in maybe having a running back by committee? Kind of which way have you done that in the past? Yeah, we we played multiple uh, backs uh, at times. You know, you know, Stephen Ridley probably was a bell cow with one unit. Yeah, uh, um, and then we then we played an array of guys. Uh, whether it was Michael Ford, whether it was Spencer Ware, whether it was Alfred Blue, and they all had strengths. Kenny Hill is in that group as well. Kenny Hill, yeah, and 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 yeah, Kenny and Terrence McGee. Yeah, was next class after, yeah. So uh, and and what we've done, you know, we've we've taken multiple at a time. You know, we we took um, Terrence, Jeremy, um, and 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 Terrence, Jeremy, and Kenny in one class, and another class uh, we took. Um, you know, uh, guys and Brissett, mm -hmm. yeah. and another class we took Leonard and Daryl. So we've we've taken them two and three at a time, um, in each year, and each kind of have emerged. Um, you know, as that as you alluded to, Clyde was was a, was a primary in nineteen, uh, but before that they played the year before that they played uh, several of them, uh, along with Brissett and, and some of those other guys, and uh, of course Leonard was a bell cow in his time, but we but other guys played as well. So we'll we'll see. However, it shakes out. Uh, just as comfortable, it's a position that's so volatile that you'll play uh, up to four a year, regardless. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll see what those guys do best and bring uh, in their contributions to our team. Yeah, it's um, God, it's so crazy that Daryl and Leonard were in the same class. I forget that. I mean, you talk about. I mean, we all knew Leonard was going to be great, but Daryl, look at what he's gone on to do as well. Uh, really, that whole list that you just named. Uh, Coach, I gotta bring you back. I don't know if you remember this, um, but I'll never forget it. We were playing Tennessee in 2011. I was, for some reason, I don't know what was going on. I was having the worst game of my life. It was like two drives in, just completely out of sorts. I'll never forget it. You took me to the side. You talked to me. You basically calmed me down, and you got my mind right, and it went very smoothly from then on. And I know I'm not necessarily asking you about that story specifically. But more of like when you're in a game situation like that, right? And I know as a coach, sometimes it's got to feel a bit helpless because you're like, we, I know we prepared for this. Like we have worked for this. What is going on? 
kind of how did you sense? How are you sensing like what I needed at that time to get my mind right? Yeah, you know, um, you learn your players, and and from the time we recruited you, uh, the the funny part I'm I'm thinking about coming out of your junior year, coming to see you at school, and Art Keo and I was coming to see Art you, and Keo, he went to the yeah. he went to the wrong state. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Georgia. I'm looking for him, and he's in Mississippi. Oh no! <laughs> it was it was awful. You could imagine how. How old the coach went about that, right? It was, oh, when, you know, we're, talking to, we're on the phone talking to Bobby J, and he's like, I, I don't know where Art is. And T Bob's like, I'm waiting for Coach Frank. And anyway, that's oh, a, I forgot about that. But, I loved Coach Kehoe too, another legend of the game. So, uh, yes, so, 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 so T Bob was a, a very smart, tough, rugged player at the center position that had the intellect to get us where we need to be. But he could also get very. He played passionately. Yeah, yeah you know his true. personality showed when he played, and so throughout that game we were sputtering, and we were favored to beat a team that that had not had you know that we 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 should have, in my opinion, uh, had a more comfortable lead against. We yeah. didn't. Frustration brewed, um, and so we we talked in that moment, just seeing body language, and he you know he would express it when he came off like some other guys would. And ironically, at the back end, we, we have a big play. We get the ball downfield. We go and hurry up, hurry up offense, and then we, we make a substitution. Um, and, <laughs> and <laughs> you know, T-Bob snaps the ball and come off, unbelievable. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. <laughs> and it was the best thing that could happen because, it, of course, it caught them with 13 yeah. people on the field. Well, well, okay, Coach. Now, this oh, is interesting. Right. This is interesting because that was fascinating. And right, yes, you are right when you kind of hit the eye roll with the substitution because that was an insane move. But what I'm talking about wasn't even that, dude. I'm talking about 2010 um, uh, Tennessee where we – or no, maybe 2011. 2011, we were at Tennessee. And I, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know if you remember this. I was yeah. having an awful game, and I'll never forget it. You came over. You talk to me, but it's funny because everything you just expressed is what applied. I think you knew kind of how yeah. my mental, just how my brain worked, and you knew that I was kind of in my head. I had to get out my head a little bit, and you you held me. You basically told me to, like, trust myself, and I just that, that always stood out to me as a very direct and clear, like, that's ideally what you want out of a coach, man, someone who you know, understands you and knows how you take and can put you in a position to succeed. And I think that's part of coaching to 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 know you to know our team to know our personnel to know your room, um, you know of 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 the guys that take the field for us. And so uh, we spend a lot of time together, uh, yeah, daily, yearly, uh, and things of that nature. So you get to learn them. And when you see those things, it's not meant for everybody. Come see what I have to say. But sometimes a subtle, at hey, come here. You got this, man. Yeah, You're gonna be all right. Yeah, we're, we're in good space and. You, you, you lend those things. And so I think it's a common thread for guys that are in tune or into their players uh, opposed to being detached and not having any idea of, of what they're going through at that time. Now, Coach, I've got to ask you because we've seen pictures of T-Bob in a 49 jersey where he claims <laughs> to be a fullback. You were the running back fullback coach at the time. Was he ever in your room, and was he seriously ever going to actually get in a, in a game and get some action at fullback? And did he have the grit to play fullback? Wait, was this hmm, – was I in the room at the time, or is this one year before? No, no, I got you. A, he had the grit. Okay. He, he was going we, – we had a elephant package. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, and we had a rhino package. Yeah. So, you know, we were 22-23 in goal line situations down there and power coming at your ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so we, need, we were trying to get as many big bodies down yeah. in there, um, you know, as we can. And so uh, certainly he was a candidate to go down there in goal line situations for us to knock it in. We never got to it. But, no. uh, yes, he practiced it. Okay. Uh, Walk through it, and uh, he's telling the truth. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I caught a touchdown. Walk through it. I love, time, it. I love it. I love it. it. I love one it. time I actually got you in the game. You know, walk throughs, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it, Coach. Uh, Coach Ray Wilson, thank you so much, man. And uh, hell yeah, man. Enjoy camp. It's going to, you know, the grind starts here. Looking forward to seeing you guys. You know, we do have the. Uh, 
the former player day coming up, right? For you yep. guys invited to come out come out to practice? Look, yeah, give us all the info and we will help spread the uh, word. Coach, I'll give it to T Bob. He doesn't check his email. I'll give the info oh, to wow. him so you can see. Hot meat kettle. Uh thank you, Coach. You have a great day. I know about it. Well, that's right. Good uh, you don't tag, need- <laughs> Yeah, Coach Frank doesn't need to hear our marital bickering. Uh, Uh, He knows us both. He probably enjoys it. You got to love the shot on the substitutions and the walk.